This is a process of determining the position of and orientation of your robot by just analyzing the images from the camera. You may remember that uh, there is a monocular visual odometry, a stereo visual odometry, and different kinds. So for monocular visual odometry, the one I wanted to see first is RPG SVO. It's the monocular visual odometry. It is a semi-direct method, which means it does not get those features. It, it works with uh, intensities directly. For those of you who have a uh, virtual box uh, and the image I actually sent today, please launch it. Uh, launch the terminal and it will tell you which command you need to execute. Just one command. So when you do it, everything will start automatically with a 50% chance it will work because it's a virtual box. So in about 20 seconds, you'll see the image there and the trajectory there. So as you can see, the algorithm, it just gets all the features from intensities and it computes the position just from that image, just from alone, single monocular vision image. It's quite precise. And it continues like that. Uh, you cannot use uh, this algorithm in Dakitan for several reasons. First, it requires extremely high FPS, about 70. Dakitan provides you with about one. Dakibot camera provides you with 30 FPS, but it's encoded, you need to decode it. After that, you need to rectify it, and since you do it on, on, all on Raspberry Pi, you just end up with maybe one or two FPS. Four, if you're lucky. So on a Dakibot, it will not work. It will lose all of the features over time and stops. So the good idea here, if you have a drone, you need a high quality camera, put it on your drone, connect it directly to anything which will process it. The processing itself is not that consuming as other visual odometry, but it still is. So, And so far, this is the best algorithm you can get in ROS. Okay guys, so for now you've seen the monocular visual odometry for drones. Another one I want to show you is the visual odometry from Tango device. Uh, it can be used on a mobile robot, so you can see how precise it is actually. And there was some drift. But still you can see the precision of this thing. It just uses the image from the camera and some additional information from the IMU. Why is this important? Okay, so when you use monocular visual odometry, you have several problems. First one, you do not, you cannot estimate your movement on a metric scale. You just can estimate it on some unknown relative scale, so you just move like this, and you can say, I've moved like five units to the front. Now, second problem, if you perform with monocular visual odometry just pure rotation, it will degrade and you just lose all of your data. It will not work anymore. So, how to overcome this? First, you need to have a metric scale. You use this by knowing the height of the camera. Technically this, you need to know the height of the camera and you need to know the angle at which it looks down. If you have IMU inside, you probably know these features already because there's a rotation vector sensor and you can estimate which direction it points. Second, when you 
rotate your robot. You just switch off any visual-based odometry. You just rely on inertial one. That's it. Only when you start moving, you start relying on some visual information as well. Tango, this little tablet. <laughs> yes, this little tablet, it's quite amazing because it uses, it has three cameras. One, of, one is a color one, second one is a depth camera, third one is a fish eye black and white camera. It uses the fish eye camera to estimate the rotation together with IMU up to 100 hertz. But the image is taken only at 10 hertz. 100 hertz is being interpolated from the IMU itself. Second part, I didn't know about this before, but the computation is performed not only on the device, but in, also in the cloud. So part of the information computes here, part of it uploads to Google, and Google computes for you your exact location. It's still not perfect. Let me demonstrate. OK, just remember where it is. And let's just drive around again. OK, now I want to return to the same point I was in. And you can see it's not the same. So when you perform the movement, and rotation a lot, and there are not enough features on the ground and around you to detect, it will start to drift. Uh, Tango actually has a mean to overcome this. They can use uh, area learning. You can actually describe the area by features it contains and learn this area. So next time you're in the same area and you can detect some of the features, you can just remember, oh, I've been here. So probably I was here when I've been here. And by that, you actually can compensate the drift. In traditional visual odometry, you just use uh, packages like uh, LibVisso2 or uh, Fovis uh, to detect uh, traditional features like corners, some textures on the ground, like all those. The RPG SVO I've shown you before, it, uh, I, even by reading the paper, I didn't know actually which features they extract. They extract some features not from the image itself, but from the intensities. It is quite fast. It's much faster than using traditional one. Like you can just use like sift and work with that later. So for a visual odometry, you just need to, first you always need to calculate some features. And next you need to find those features on the second frame and you need to compare them. And by this comparison, you need to estimate which actually movement did you have. I have a video which can show this much better. OK, so in your virtual machine, if you launched it, there are five videos. You can launch the first one, the most top one. It's an example of a visual odometry. It says uh, stereo, but actually, in fact, it's a mono. Here. So on the top, you can see the vehicle driving through the street. And it computes the features and computes the, its relative location down. Uh, the precision is comparable with GPS. Yeah, it's that good. But you see, with so many features, you need a lot of processing power to do that. And uh, it's not really suitable for Ducky bots because of that reason. This is the cheating data set. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the algorithm is, I think it's uh, LibVisso. Yeah. Yeah, so we can have another video. Not the perfect one. Yeah, because of the projector quality, you can't see how it works. You probably will need to launch it inside the virtual machine. But when you do stereo, it's quite easy to compute the point cloud from two images. And after that, you just orient by point clouds. And since 
you have two images and one camera, you can tri triangulate pretty well and you can estimate your movement on a metric scale. But I told you last week that uh, stereo visual odometry is not good for small robots because with small robots you have a stereo camera with smaller and smaller distance between those cameras and at some point it will be useless just you, you will not be able to triangulate anymore. <laughs> this is the last video. Yeah, it's also example of stereo from Kitty data set. Uh, algorithm again lib we saw. Here you can see the features being extracted. Mm -hmm. And on the image down, you pr actually can see it's not far from ground truth, so. Uh, still, all, m most all of the image-based visual odometry, they have about 3% of error. So it will accumulate over time, it will become unreliable. A Tango, when it's used in its maximum capacity, like with cloud backend, with area learning, it has about 1%. And if you use uh, some LiDAR-based visual odometry, you will get a very good precision, but it's not the topic of this <laughs> demo. For that, I think it's finished. Thank you.